One of the things that young developers are obsessed with is how recent a particular technology is. Now, I understand why this is the case, because for a long, long time, for like 10, 20 years, especially when it came to the web stack, the technology changed so often. I remember between the early 1990s to I say maybe 2010, every period of time, it could have been a year, it could have been three years, depending on the tech, things changed quite a bit. So I told the story once how a friend of mine who was pretty big into the technology, uh, the web design and web development stack in the 90s, he stepped away from it from 1998, 99. He stepped away until about 2003. When he came back, he saw that the web had changed huge, 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 huge. There was a big transformation in web development and web design from 1998 to say 2002, 2003. It was happening during that time. And I remember him, he sat down with me I forget the exact time, 2002, 2003, I'm not sure when it was, somewhere in, in that time frame. And he was blown away at how different the whole process of building websites and web apps had become. It had changed radically. And so all the books and all the teachings, if you will, from just a few years before were just like, poof, gone. Not at all relevant for the most part, when it comes to the web stack. This video is sponsored by Buddy, a tool that allows for easy continuous deployments and continuous integrations. It's in a GUI, very intuitive. They have over 100 predefined actions and integrations to use. Now I say for the most part because different tech moves at different speeds. So for example, SQL, which is, was invented in the 1970s by, I think it was IBM, a couple of guys at IBM. It hasn't changed much. It hadn't changed much since, I don't know when, I don't keep a close eye on SQL, but since the 1990s, at least until today, not much of a change, not much of a change. Standard, I think it's ANSI SQL is pretty stable. So. If you learned SQL five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you're good to go today for the most part. I say for the most part again, because it depends on particular uh, databases. So Oracle have their own implementation, their own version of SQL. So they'll have the standard basic version and then they'll have their own stuff. And Microsoft does the same thing. I think MySQL, same thing, you get the idea. But nonetheless, when it comes to basic SQL, you could pick up a 20 year old book on SQL and you'd be fine. You'd be pretty fine in terms of uh, learning SQL because the language has not changed much in many, many years. In fact, I would, I would argue decades or two. That being said, on the high level and different sub specialization for MySQL server or for Oracle, yes, there'll be some changes here and there, but I'm talking the standard stuff hasn't changed much. So, the whole point of this video is to say to you that when it comes to the actual programming languages, the popular ones that are used today, uh, first of all, I made a video stating that they are pretty much entrenched. I think that you're not going to see a big move away from the major players over the next long time. Why? There's just no need to. Now, in the past, you would create a programming language because there was a particular need that was uh, very important that was not addressed by the current languages. So, for example, you have domain-specific languages, meaning languages are designed to work within a particular environment that needs a language. So, JavaScript comes to mind. JavaScript was designed, I think, in 95 to uh, have a programming language inside of a web browser. That was its point. It was a domain-specific language, the domain being the web browser. SQL, on the other hand, was designed for relational databases. They wanted a language specific to that so that people could write uh, what they would call a 4GL language, fourth generation language, a language that read more like English than like code, so that the idea was that accountants or bookkeepers could use those languages. It didn't turn out that way, but if you read SQL, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's not cryptic, right? Select star from, select name, first name, last name, from, table, XYZ. 
it reads like English, right? So there's a couple examples of languages that are created to address a particular domain, a particular uh, application, if you will. Other languages were created to address a certain issue. So Python was created, I think it was 1989 or 1990, uh, just because the guy, I think his name is Guido, he wanted a uh, easy to write, easy to work with language. So he wrote Python and uh, you can look it up on Wikipedia if you want to learn the details. Um, the Ruby creator, I don't know why I'm talking about Ruby. The Ruby creator, creator Ruby, because he wanted a more object oriented version of Python, if you will. And that's what he said himself. So, um, and Ruby is like super object oriented. You, you, you have a, you type in the, the number two, the int two, and you put a dot and boom, you got all the methods associated with that. Uh, whereas other languages like Java, you know, they would have um, it's object oriented, but it was not pure object oriented. Anyway, I won't go down that rat's nest, uh, that rabbit hole rather. Java was created because the people at the time wanted a language that could run on any operating system, Windows, Mac, Unix, you know, etc. And that was its purpose. And uh, so I can go on and on and on with many examples. So yes, you have different languages were created to address certain needs. Now, what you have seen over the years is as computers got faster, CPUs faster and cheaper, memory faster and cheaper, the need for highly optimized, speedy programming languages like C++ and C became less and less important because to process text, for instance, yes, under the hood, C and C++ will do much faster than JavaScript or Python or PHP or Ruby or C Sharp. But from a user's perspective, you're not going to see any difference in speed because they're so fast now. The processors, the computers, the servers are so fast that you won't see a difference in the speed, in the execution speed, at least as far as a human is concerned. Eh, this may change if you have a huge type of uh, Google size application or a Facebook type size of application where you might have to drop down and write a bunch of libraries in C or C++ just for speed purposes. But uh, that is a rare case indeed. That is a rare case indeed. As I've told people in many videos, write time speed is much more important most of the time than runtime speed. The faster, easier to write languages will win out over the faster to run languages in most situations because uh, adding more power to your server is a lot cheaper than having coders have to write much more code or spend much more time writing code to get more juice or more speed out of, an, out of an application. So let me give you one last example. So let's look at HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. This is the, uh, the core languages of every known website and web app in the universe. And um, since about 2012, 2013, that's been pretty static. That's been pretty static, static meaning it's pretty much the same. In previous versions of HTML, you saw HTML 1 and 2 and 3.2 and 4 and then 5, where we're at now. The whole game has changed where instead of having HTML 6, that, that might come out maybe, maybe years from now, they're just adding more capability to 5 or they're implementing the spec more. You see, you got the nerds at W3C, they come out with a specification, but there's a lag time between the specification, the actual implementation within the browsers. The browser makers have to implement these ideas. So most recently, most notably, uh, Flexbox and CSS Grid has been implemented widely, pretty much widely across all the major browsers now. So that becomes an option with the inclusion or the acceptance rather of the specification that's been around a while. Uh, now you don't necessarily have to use Bootstrap. You can use that. Now at the same time, you don't not have to use Bootstrap either, right? Bootstrap is still very capable. And so if you're Bootstrap based, you can still use Bootstrap if you want. So when it comes to HTML5, CSS3 and JavaScript, especially when it comes to the fundamentals, the core of the languages, they haven't changed much in many years now. And guess what? They've reached plateau. They've reached plateau. So what does that mean? There's not much difference happening now. Why? Because they're pretty mature, they're pretty good. So in all technology development, whether it be information technology and programming languages and so forth, or whether it be chemistry or chemical technology or petroleum tech, whatever it is, green tech, 
initially you have this big ramp up in terms of changes and then over time it normalizes and you don't see much of a change over the years. You're going to see that with, uh, we're seeing that with cell phones now, right? Smartphones. You think about it. Smartphone from four, four, year, four years ago, how much different is it from a smartphone today? Everything's a little bit faster, screen's a bit nicer, but it's pretty much the same. You can even go back further. Okay, let me conclude with the main point of this video. When it comes to the major languages out today, programming languages and coding languages, not much has changed in many years. You know, on the peripheral, on the advanced stuff, yeah, but in terms of the core language, not much has changed. PHP, there's between five, six, they've added more capabilities and more, uh, uh, and they made it much faster, but it's pretty much the same. If you knew PHP 4 or 5, you knew PHP 5, getting into 7 is like, uh, okay, two minutes, I understand the difference. Python, the big change to Python, the biggest change, I think it was 08, when they went from Python 2 to 3. But even moving from 2, if you learn Python 2, for you to learn 3, there's some syntax difference here and there, module differences, but eh, not a big deal. Java. Again, Java, yes, there's differences, new libraries and stuff, but if you knew Java from five, seven years ago, you, you, you know, to do Java today, no big deal. Same thing with JavaScript, same thing with Python, same, you know, I just said Python. You get the idea, SQL, C Sharp. What has changed? Now, this is something you have to recognize. I think the big change that I see coming What's already happening, we saw DevOps in the early 90s, mid 90s, late 90s. DevOps was really primitive compared to today. But it got very, very, very advanced, very advanced. It got to a point about, about six, seven, eight years ago, whatever it was, it got very advanced where everybody has to do command line, you're doing Git and this and that and the other thing, and check in and check out. There's all kinds of complexity you can get into. But now that's even simplifying. Now that's even simplifying. People recognize, okay, it's getting a little too complex. So now tools are coming in to sit on top of that complexity, make it easier for developers to develop. So there you have it. So when you're looking at, when you're looking at uh, the languages and looking at the technology, it's not as critical anymore that you have you know, stuff that was created in the last two minutes. So if you're looking at programming languages, people ask me, what do you think this programming language is going to be in, in five years, or this one or that one? I don't think the the big ones, JavaScript, Python, PHP, C Sharp, Java, SQL, I don't think these things are going to go anywhere anytime soon because they're just, they're good. They're good at what they do. And, you know, the problems that they may have can be addressed with some small updates. And they just keep getting more performant with the updates and also because hardware is just getting better and better. Anyway, I hope this video helps you in alleviating any fears you may have about, oh, am I gonna learn something that's old? 95% chance you won't. Don't go learning Flash or Delphi. Not that anything against it, but it's just, you know, no jobs. Anyway, so there you go. I hope that helps. Bye-bye. Just to close off this video, our sponsor, Buddy, is a CI CD automation tool. It's very intuitive, simple to use. You can set up everything with a GUI. They have over 100 predefined actions, integrations to use. I welcome tools like Buddy because though DevOps is essential today, it can get a little bit too complex and silly to set up and run, slowing down the development process. Tools like Buddy can help solve that problem.